Good morning, folks. We've got a number of articles to hit today, but we've also got real world events to cover from the weather to earthquakes to the sun. Let's begin at spaceweathernews.com and find the last day on our star bringing that equatorial coronal hole extension from the south around to earth facing heliographic latitudes. Magnetic connection to it expected within 36 hours. Meanwhile, the solar wind has calmed a bit. Small fluctuations remain, but the overall intensity of the streams is dropping. Geomagnetism gets through a night without instability after days on end of having it. Let's peek in on a system in the Philippine Sea charging northward. Right now, the forecasts don't have either Taiwan or Japan taking as major of a hit as South Korea as it's currently slated to sneak through the waterways. We'll keep the eyes on the forecasts. It is indeed the only system of note in either the West Pacific or Indian Ocean. Meanwhile, that is not exactly the case where they've got them surrounded back to the West. Six named storms and four sub-lows that aren't exactly bringing bright and sunny conditions beneath them. The storm coming off this list next is dissipating over Texas and the South Central States. Imelda was said to be able to drop two feet of water on parts of Texas, and while it didn't quite get there, the flash flood reports coming in yesterday and last night show a somewhat less than optimal evening down near the Gulf. Well, folks, the earthquakes did not wait long. Nice little sequence this morning, 500 to 600 kilometers deep. Let's hope it was a quick flurry pressure release and it got it out of its system. I want to go next to a new video on meltwater penetration of the ice sheets and how that affects runoff. But for those who know of the great surges of water and ice in the last great catastrophe, the ones pushing that mud and ice and other bits of earth which likely buried the mammoths to freeze them with fresh food still in their mouths and stomachs, perhaps this can give you an idea of how seemingly imperceptible changes beneath the surface could take this to an extreme, sending gargantuan amounts of ice surging down and even creating tsunamis. Up next, a critical point. They find that the year without summer was made a hundred times more likely due to the eruption of Tambora. It was larger than the 1991 Pinatubo blast. They say these eruptions have far more of a climate forcing effect than we realized. And this reminds us that during the time of global warming, we have enjoyed near record low volcanic forcing. And it just takes one. Up next. Veterans will certainly remember the story from earlier this year out of NASA saying Saturn's rings are not old, but relatively new young features. Well, today Sweary is countering that concept, saying that the modern ring system is how they've modeled primordial old rings would look today after all this time. Well, we know how good their modeling is at capturing reality, right? Something tells me the electrical connections between Saturn and its rings weren't exactly considered in that Sweary study. A moment of levity here, despite not knowing what dark matter is, ever finding it, and having every experiment of theirs fail, they somehow think they can train artificial intelligence to study it. They believe that the computers can gauge and compute and extrapolate data from the largest scales down to the smallest, to capture what human eyes, for example, miss when looking at a busy cosmos with lots of forces and material at work. Well, one of the things that hasn't been kind to their modeling is quasars. You will recall from our plasma cosmology movie that professors recognize how the oldest quasars in the cosmos appear to have formed before they think such things were possible in the universe. Today, they continue their frustration. In terms of galaxies reaching that energetic quasar phase, it was believed that it required a relatively active nucleus already, something like a Seifert or starburst galaxy. But we're now finding that's not the case. They have discovered six relatively weak galaxies exploding into quasar forms seemingly out of nowhere. This was not supposed to be possible, but alas, the sleeping giants can awaken without warning. Couple things here. Website members, you've got a deeper look yesterday, really meant to make you think about the mantle and the crust and the great catastrophe cycle of Earth. Over a third of the tickets are gone for OTF 2020 and it's almost 11 months away. This is the last pre-registration month, only chance to get your tickets at that price before regular registration begins in October. We greatly appreciate your support. Observatoryproject.com for information and registration on the conference. Suspiciousobservers.org for the website members' content. We've got wind map forecasts and shots of our star to close, and we'll do this all again tomorrow. Right here, but right now, it's 4.20 a.m. in the new Valley of the Sun. Eyes open, no fear. Be safe, everyone.